Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, once again, it is a huge pleasure for me to say Happy Nauru's to all of you. And Happy Nauru's Mrs. Rajavi and the brave people of Iran. Um, honourable colleagues, dear guests and friends, it's a great honour to be here with you today for the celebration of Nauru's, the Persian New Year. And to add my voice to that of previous speakers in support of the brave men and women in Iran. We've gathered here today because we don't just want to celebrate New Year and spring in Iran. We want to celebrate the real spring, the day when Iran is free from the tyrannical rule of the Ayatollahs. And we must not forget that misogyny is central to the regime's domestic repression. The regime has tried to exclude women from shaping the future of their country by suppressing generations of girls in Iran, and it is still ongoing today. But by leading both the organized resistance and the anti-regime uprising for the last four decades, the Iranian women are showing the Ayatollahs in Tehran that they will not be denied their inalienable <coughs> right to define and shape the future of their country. It's in this regard that I want to congratulate and recognize the National Council of Resistance of Iran for the election of Mrs. Maryam Rajavi as its president-elect, setting a clear example for Iranian women's leadership. With her 10-point plan and the other platforms to secure women's rights in the future of Iran, Mrs. Rajavi has shown the women of Iran that you can, you will, shoulder responsibility and that women are indeed the force for change and the guarantor for a democratic Iran. The reality is also confirmed by the many other brave women and young girls playing, paying the ultimate price for speaking out against the regime and for demanding dignity and their fundamental <laughs> rights and freedoms, rights and freedoms that we take for granted in this country. And I've highlighted all of this uh, in a debate in this House in January and again last week during the International Women's Day debate, which I made a, a tribute to the brave, me brave women uh, and the men supporting them uh, in Iran. Women in Iran are fighting for gender equality for the future of Iran, which is summarized in many ways by the 10-point plan for, uh, that Ma Ma Madame Rajavi has already put forward. And, and to quote, complete gender equality in the realms of political, social, cultural, and economic rights and equal participation of women in political leadership. Abolishment of any form of discrimination. The right to choose one's own clothing freely the right to freely marry and divorce, the right to obtain education and employment, prohibition of all forms of exploitation against women under any pretext. These are the things that the 10-point plan is arguing for, and these are the things which are the fundamental right of all women wherever they are in the world, and we want, them to have, we want the women of Iran to have that right as well. So as our government steps up its efforts internationally to promote the rights of women and girls across the world, it should take the step and recognise Mrs Rajavi's 10-point plan as a viable roadmap to secure and advance women and girls' rights in Iran and even across the Middle East. Today, we are hearing alarming reports from Iran about a new wave of toxic attacks, this time against schoolgirls and female students across the country. Many point to mounting evidence and describe these poisoned attacks as revenge by the, re by the regime's supreme leader, Khamenei, and forces under his command against the young girls and female students for their active participation in the latest round of anti-regime protests. Sadly, ladies and gentlemen, the regime is showing its sinister nature again 